Welcome back. You're watching News Now on CNBC TV 18. Now, with the probable exit from the EU and the imminent visits in April to the UK by the Finance Minister Arun Jaitley, followed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, it is an appropriate time for the biggest voices on the UK-India Business Council to come together and reinvigorate dialogues between the two nations at the highest level. CNBC TV 18's Shireen Pant spoke to Richard Heald of the UK-India Business Council and Sir Dominic Asquith, British High Commissioner to India on a range of issues that involve both the nations. Listen in. This is an issue that uh, India has raised with the UK, that the UK seems to be providing safe haven to a lot of Indian economic offenders. Uh, so so where, where does the conversation on, on, on that lie? Uh, the conversation very firmly lies that this is uh, a legal and judicial matter, not one for the government to involve in. There's a separation, as here, between government and the uh, judiciary. So I'm not going to start trespassing into that area. Uh, all I can say is the Crown Prosecution Service, in the case of one of those uh, people who somehow found his way out of India um, <laughs> and ended up in London, uh, the Crown Prosecution Service and the Indian government uh, are working very closely together, uh, and indeed, uh, I have received many compliments from the Indian government about the, the manner of that collaboration. Uh, it is going through the courts. Um, we will, uh, the courts will address it in the way that they do. I don't think it's as much of a concern today as it was, say, four years ago. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that whether it's Vodafone or uh, Kane, I mean, these are, these are arbitration proceedings that have been on for a few years now and haven't seen a resolution or a conclusion just yet. The government has, uh, has chosen not to, uh, to repeal the retrospective uh, tax law. You know, what is, while the government is, has gone on to say that we don't, uh, we will not uh, indulge in tax terrorism, we don't intend to have an adversarial uh, tax relationship with investors, what more can the government perhaps do to give comfort, especially when it comes to perhaps moving faster on the arbitration proceedings? I think what's really important about it is the continued reassurance from uh, the finance minister that uh, they're not going to pursue other retrospective tax uh, claims. The second most important thing is now that, given that they are in an arbitration mm -hmm. process, mm -hmm. is to let that arbitration process uh, complete, mm -hmm. not do anything that will uh, preempt uh, the outcome of that arbitration process and make clear that that is uh, the plan. I think those would, would be very reassuring uh, signals to uh, investors and indeed those engaged currently in the arbitration. You know, Richard, when we, uh, we did the CEO forum in India a few years ago, uh, one of the sectors that, that held out a lot of promise, especially in the context of the liberalization on single brand retail, uh, was, was the retail sector. But there were concerns that were raised there about the kind of caveats that the policy had put in place. Uh, ha has a lot of that been sorted out, addressed, do you think? Is retail uh, now a sector that we could see much more uh, big ticket uh, investment from the UK coming? Into? One of the areas where the UK is very, very much involved in, in India is, is in retail and commerce. Um, just anecdotally, the, the, the largest percentage of interactions by sector that we, my organisation has is within the, within the retailing. Even within the current construct, I believe that there, there is only one company, or two companies, that have actually gone the full 100% mm. FDI rate, right. one of which is, is Pavis Shoes, a UK company. Um, and so it doesn't seem to be that much of an inhibitor mm. at, at the moment. You're seeing growth in, in, in joint ventures, the Marks and Spencer's joint venture with Reliance. Alarm Bajne Se Pehle Jago Re, a Tata Tea campaign in association with Network 18, recently held a town hall with HRD Minister Prakash Javadekar, where we gave him a petition to make gender sensitization compulsory in schools. More than 10 like citizens have signed the petition. Let's take a look at how this campaign.